This other guy I had in here, I don't know if you're familiar with Mad Dog, Jim Lawler. Oh, yeah, sure. He was telling me that, um, he was explaining to me basically the story about how he got recruited into the CIA. Uh -huh. And he was telling, because I guess he was out in Iran, a bunch of other places, recruiting people. And he says when he was recruiting people, he would look for people that had these narcissistic traits. Absolutely. Narcissists are the perfect people to be agents. Perfect. Why? Because they're so arrogant. They, they conclude, <laughs> well, yes, of course the CIA would, would want to recruit me because I'm so important that they can't do their jobs without me. <laughs> That's amazing. That is absolutely true, what he said. Absolutely true. You know, what they, what they teach you in training is you have to look for somebody with a vulnerability. But the word vulnerability means a whole lot of different things. For example, let, let's say you are um, Iranian. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's too hard because we don't have an embassy there. Let's say you're um, Indonesian, right? And I'm just making this up, so I'm not like revealing any secrets or anything. But what they teach you in training is everybody has a vulnerability, so you have to go through what's called the asset acquisition cycle. Spot, assess, develop, recruit. So I spot you. I meet you at a diplomatic cocktail party, or I meet you at a dinner somewhere, or I meet you in a, in a meeting at your foreign ministry. So I assess you. Does this guy have access to something that I might want? You know, if you are... Um, the officer responsible for, you know, coffee exports. Mm. I'm, I'm not interested. No. But if you work at the port in the part that's off limits to everybody else, yeah, I'm interested. I mean, I'd like to know what's coming into the port. Is it weapons? Is it chemical, <clears throat> precursor chemicals for, for cocaine? Uh, you know, it could be anything. Um, the third part is develop. That's when we get to know each other. I take you out to dinner. Our wives become friends. Right. I start spending money on you because I have an expense account and you don't. You mentioned that, um, oh, all your life you fantasized about seeing New York. Well, I'm going to send you and your wife on an all expenses paid trip to New York. Or you love fishing, but, oh, you could never afford one of those charters. They're $10,000 a day. No problem. You want to go charter fishing? Let's go catch a sailfish or a swordfish or a tuna. No problem. I've got plenty of money. Um, and then once I've understood your vulnerability, I'm going to recruit you. Now, the vulnerability can be one of many, many different things. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. you've got a kid uh, with a cleft palate and you can't afford the surgery. I'll send your kid to the friggin' Mayo Clinic right. and pay cash. Or maybe... You so love your kid, and he's really smart, but he's going to go to the local uh, school, the local college, because, you know, and nobody wears shoes because everybody's poor. No, no. I'll send him to, to Boston College or Harvard mm. or UT, wherever he wants mm. to go. Pick a school. We have relationships with all of them. Happy to get him in. We'll pay for everything. Um, or maybe... You got passed over for promotion and you want to fuck your boss, right? You want to get him back because you're the smartest and hardest working person in that office and they screwed you and they passed you over. You want to get revenge. Come and talk to me. I'll help you get revenge. I'll pay you handsomely for it too. You know, or... It's so wild that you can just... People can build these relationships. Like they're... like At, at what point do you draw a line between like becoming friends with somebody and getting to know somebody being friends with their family and just trying to get, do a job and manipulate somebody I, like i think i may have mentioned to you in the the last time we talked that the cia actively seeks to hire people who have sociopathic tendencies right. not right. sociopaths that's fascinating to me it 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 works it works for them sociopaths are impossible to control they slip through the cracks because they have no conscience and they pass the polygraph very easily because they don't feel guilty about anything at all. And they tend to rise to the highest levels of the CIA. People who have sociopathic tendencies do have a conscience, but are still perfectly happy to work in moral, legal, and ethical gray areas. I'll tell you, a guy that I worked for, a very senior CIA officer that I worked for, told me that he had five 
recruitments over the course of a 30-year career. And he said he remembered every detail of those five recruitments. I was fortunate in that I had five recruitments in four years at one stretch. Wow. It was because we were fighting multiple wars. Um, I was in <clears throat> poor countries where it's easier to recruit somebody because money goes so much farther. Mm, people are more vulnerable. More vulnerable. And 95% are going to do it for the money. Another like 4% are going to do it for revenge. And 1% is going to do it for patriotism. They just love the United States. Right. You know, they, they watch the, those Tom Clancy movies and, mm -hmm. you know, they want a piece of the action. And what you do is you dummy up a, an award. You just, you know, do it on, do it in Microsoft. Mm -hmm. You make a fake award and you put a gold seal on it and you sign the CIA director's name and right. you frame it and then you take it to one of the meetings and you say, listen, the headquarters gave you this award. You can't keep it because you're undercover. Uh, so we're going to keep it in a safe in headquarters. And they're like, oh, one guy started crying. When I, when I gave him the fake award, he started crying. Like, God bless you. God bless you. God bless America. I was like, yeah, yeah. God bless America. Now, what about the plans for that Russian tank you were talking about? <laughs> so a long way of That's saying my, right. my actual point was. So you admittedly have uh, sociopathic traits. Oh, I was perfectly happy to break into people's houses and plant bugs and cameras. and Because we were the good guys. I had convinced myself right. that we were the good guys. My country needed me, right? Right. And then after 9-11, I was like, you know what? We're all fucking war criminals. Every one of us. I got to get out of here. <clears throat> yeah. But anyway, uh, out of all the people I recruited, there were two to whom I said, you know what? In a different life, you and I would be friends. I'd like to hang out with you. Mm. Yeah. Sorry about your luck. This is not that life. That's, this is not that Cut life. Cut his throat. Yeah. Jesus. How many people like you that are working covert overseas in these obscure countries, how many people of these CIA officers have to kill? And how many of them, are, are all of them trained to kill? No. No. Um, the average CIA officer will almost never find himself in a position where he has to kill somebody. Almost never. Almost never. I mean, you know, we had a situation back in the 90s where, um, where one of our... Let me think how I'm going to say this. One of our case officers had recruited a third country national in a European country. Okay? okay. So uh, he's in Europe, but this guy's from some terrible enemy country. And he's given information, and the information's good. And one of the analysts at headquarters says, wow, whoever this source is, because the analysts don't know who the sources are. The analyst said, wow, whoever this source is, his information's really good. Can I come out and debrief him? So the station said, sure. Come on out, TDY. We'll set up a meeting. So the analyst and the case officer went to the predetermined hotel to do the meeting when they walked into the room the source pulled out a gun and shot the case officer tried to shoot the analyst and missed and then ran the analyst saved the case officer's life by staunching the bleeding oh wow but it was a setup <clears throat> from the beginning it turned out this source was actually an officer in that enemy country's intelligence service and was running a double agent op with a point being to kill our officer. Now, the officer should have been armed. He wasn't because he thought he could trust the source. And in a situation like that, he ought to have had a moment to pull out his weapon. I was always armed in, in the places where I served. No, not in Bahrain. Nothing ever happens there. But, but in the other places where I was an active uh, uh, ops officer, I was always armed, usually with two weapons. I, I had one in a tearaway fanny pack, and I had one on my ankle, you know, just in case things got really bad and you went through three clips, well, you got six more shots on your ankle. So, right. yeah, save one for yourself. <laughs> <laughs>